Thank you, Chairman Carper, and thank you, Director Williams, for being here, and thank you for the open door of communication and the visit to West Virginia. Certainly appreciate that. Um, we have discussed in previous hearings the frustrations that I've had with the delays the consultation under the Endangered Species Act has added to projects in West Virginia and elsewhere. Our State Department of Transportation has faced delays in road and bridge projects. Our Department of Environmental Protection has dealt with delays in consultation on not only active mining permits, but also on projects to remediate our abandoned mine sites through the AML projects or programs. Local government officials have come to me to express frustration with delays to water and sewer projects, and private industry has faced delays due to a backlog of ESA consultation requests. So you've heard many of these concerns from me uh, when you came to West Virginia when we talked on the phone uh, just most recently, and I appreciate the fact that you do listen and try to um, make those things better. I do want to acknowledge and thank the Elkins Field Office for its work on the biological opinions on two major projects in West Virginia, the Mountain Valley Pipeline and Nucor's steel, uh, steel, Sheet Steel Mill. I also want to acknowledge the additional resources that you have allotted to, in reviewing projects in West Virginia through creating three new full-time positions in the Elkins field office and by detailing staff from elsewhere in the service to help address the backlog of project reviews in our state. However, more work is needed and the service must better utilize its resources to ensure the projects are reviewed in a timely manner. Section 7 consultations under the Endangered Species Act are the poster child for project delays and bureaucratic roadblocks in the federal environment review and permitting process. Fairly or not, other agencies often cite that this, the slow Section 7 consultations as the justification for not in advancing their own permitting process. The administration continues to blame these delays solely on a lack of funding and staffing. Currently, West Virginia state agencies, the private sector, and even other federal agencies are funding positions at the services field office in Elkins. This feels like West Virginians are kind of getting taxed twice to do the same work that the service does. We even experience delays with getting the very paperwork in place that establishes cooperative agreements for my state's agencies to even use the taxpayer dollars to fund staff for the field office. West Virginia Department of Highways has been funding a position at the field office for 10 years. Let me say that again, 10 years. Um, even so, the West Virginia DOH is willing to fund a second position at the field office to move consultations for roads and bridges through the process. There's a lot of money flowing on these ro roads and bridges proce um, projects. But unfortunately, the West Virginia DA DOH has been locked in a back and forth negotiations with the field office for months over how to do just that. I do not believe that adding a second position with the same duties uh, should take months to negotiate after 10 years of experience of working the same kind of agreement. Additionally, the process agreement between West Virginia DOH, the Federal Highways, and the service, which we discussed during your visit last August, still has not been finalized months later. The backlog of biological assessments and consultations seems to never end, and recent species listings and rulemakings by the service don't seem to be helping the problem. The service admits the, nat the northern long-eared back populations are declining due to effects separate and apart from infrastructure projects or economic development activities. One of the delayed projects is important to my state, the Coalfields Expressway, which recently received a rural grant through the IIJA. There are similar stories all across the country, and they demonstrate that, the, that there's a failure of the federal government's incoherent policies and implementation. Just in the past two weeks, the Senate has passed three regulations of disapproval on fish and wildlife regulatory actions that have significant consequences on landowners and project developers. On the one hand, the president has been trumpeting the IIJA, and at the same time, the administration is throwing wrench after wrench into the planning and construction process for key inf uh, infrastructure projects. The Biden administration's alleged statements of support for key infrastructure projects do not match the actions, and so that historic investment, the good it can do, and the jobs and tax revenues it would support is withering on the vine. The service must start striking a balance between recovering species and protecting American livelihoods. And with that, Mr. Chair, I... Um, turn it back to you. Thank you, ma'am.
You, uh, you mentioned Elkins a couple of times in your, your statement, and I'm thinking uh, a couple of days ago was Mother's Day, and uh, as, as ranking member knows, uh, my uh, mother, my father, their families grew up in near Beckley, but my mother, first year, years of her life, lived in Elk Elkins with her. And Mother's Day was created by a West Virginian. Ah, it just, just yes, gets better yes, and better. Yes, it just all starts and ends there. <laughs> 